I'm Bob Wiley, and our guest today is Pat White. Right, Bob. And he's come to talk to us about a group of murals that can be found in downtown Iowa City. Can you tell us how you became interested in these murals? Well, first, first of all, thank thank you for your and the senior center for your interest in, in the murals. I my first recollection of what we call the Pelzer murals uh, comes probably in the late 40s, early 50s. I grew up in Iowa City, uh, and Iowa City was a much different place in the late 40s and uh, early 50s. I graduated from City High in 58, but in the late 40s, uh, early 50s, we lived, I lived of course with my parents out in Rundle Street and then later East Court Street. But it was not uncommon for me as an 8, 10, 12 year old young man to ride my bicycle all over town or, and into downtown Iowa City where my, my father had an office. Um, and uh, there were lots of things for young people to do in downtown Iowa City and, and that was an era when parents weren't hesitant to let their children uh, come to downtown alone during the day. Uh, and these murals were commissioned by the Jefferson Hotel, which was a centerpiece of downtown Iowa City, operating as a traditional hotel. Um, in 1934, uh, they commissioned Mildred Pelzer to do these murals, and she did a series of eight of them. They're, they're all four feet high and 12 feet long, so they're very large murals. Uh, very different from the term mural today is frequently used to describe something on the outside of a building. These, these were uh, oil on canvas paintings that were, after the Jefferson Commission, were hung in the lobby of the Jefferson Hotel. And they came to be widely known, um, uh, besides attracting the interest of an uh, 8, 10, 12 year old uh, Iowa City young man, they generated a lot of publicity for the Jefferson Hotel and Iowa City, even making some tourism uh, guides, and Iowa tourism guides. But they were depictions, and this was the focus of the commission, of historical scenes in Iowa City. Uh, the one that is currently hanging in the senior center called Stage Ready depicts a stagecoach loaded up and ready to head west toward Des Moines and other uh, parts west. Uh, somewhere on Clinton Street, but probably between Iowa Avenue and, and Washington, the one that is currently hanging in the Iowa City Public Library called Railroad Arrives depicts the first arrival of the railroad in Iowa City on New Year's Eve of 1955, New Year's Day 19, 18, 1855. Uh, 1856. And there were a total of eight uh, depicting historic scenes, including those two. And there's just something about the uh, uh, depiction of historic scenes and the murals themselves that captivated me as a, a young boy. We probably should mention the, the one in the senior center is in the assembly room on the main floor and can be seen there now. I see it's on loan from the school district. Apparently. It's on loan from Longfellow School, which is an interesting part of the preservation story. The, the one which is depicted on the second floor of the Iowa City Library is also on loan from Longfellow School. Now, we're taping this on Friday the 13th of July, and both of these paintings are going to be returned to their owner, the Iowa City School District, and Longfellow School sometime during the month of August. So this is, they, they've been hanging where they, they are since May of 2017 on loan from the school district. What triggered the loan is Longfellow School is being remodeled. In approximately 1970, early 70s, the murals had been taken down by the Hotel Jefferson as part of a remodeling project, and they had disappeared. And a, a gentleman now deceased uh, by the name of George Dane, whose career was as a trust officer for what's now Midwest One Bank, and for most of its life in Iowa City was Iowa State Bank and Trust up at the 
corner of Washington and Clinton. He was involved in his capacity as a trust officer in the sale of the building by the Jefferson Hotel to the University of Iowa, which still owns the, the Jefferson, and they turned it into an office building. And as, as part of his duties prior to the closing, he was in the basement surveying what was there and uh, the facility itself. And he found these two murals rolled up in the basement of the Jefferson. And he recognized them as two of the eight murals which had been commissioned by the Jefferson and had hung in the lobby for uh, probably 30, maybe 40 years. Nobody is exactly sure how long they hung there. Um, and he took it upon himself to persuade the Iowa State Bank and Trust Company to preserve these two murals. And the bank spent its own money to um, conserve, preserve the two murals. Since probably the mid, early to mid 1970s, they've been hanging in Longfellow School, uh, not very well noticed and, and not very well regarded. And um, I took it upon myself when I heard Longfellow was going to be closed for a little over a year for remodeling to approach the school district with the idea that this would be an ideal time to take these murals back downtown as close as I could get them to their old location, the Jefferson Hotel, and make them available to a wider section of the community. And so one is, I'm very grateful to the Senior Center, Linda Copping, who at that time was the director of the Senior Center. and. Um, the, the Iowa City Public Library, uh, who've uh, been kind enough to each accept one. The one that's hanging in the library is Railroad Arrives, which is uh, the second one. Um, the reason that Mr. Dane picked Longfellow School is that there, Longfellow School was the site in Civil War era of a camp, a training camp, for Northern Civil War soldiers, and it was called Camp Pope. Now, I think the literal camp maybe included some of the Longfellow grounds and a little bit of ground probably to the west of the present Longfellow site, but if you, you can't get there now because it's uh, surrounded by uh, construction fencing and trying to keep people away, but there is a very sizable boulder with a plaque on it commemorating the Civil War era Camp Pope on the Longfellow grounds. And history seems to recall, or George thought he recalled, hearing stories about Camp Pope that when trains came on the, the tracks, and it's the same tracks that currently exist, what eventually became the Rock Island Railroad, and now is the site of the Iowa Interstate Railroad, and some other train traffic goes through there, not passenger traffic anymore. The Civil War Northern soldier trainees, trains were pretty much a rarity, would hear the train coming from its steam whistle and break out of camp to run from Longfellow School over to where the railroad tracks still are to see this phenomenon, the Iron Horse, coming into Iowa City, which made its first appearance on New Year's Eve of uh, 1856, and a few years thereafter into the, the Civil War. So he thought there was a specific connection between the mural that hangs in the library, Railroad Arrives, and, and has been paired up because it was found in the basement of the Jefferson with stage ready. And uh, he persuaded Longfellow, or they were persuaded to, to take them, and that's where they'll, they'll return. The current principal of Longfellow participated in our uh, dedication or welcoming ceremony in May of 2017 when these murals were hung, one here in the senior center and one in the library. Um, it was uh, quite, a, quite an evening to reflect on the murals. One of our speakers was the director of the um, Cedar Rapids Museum of Art, where there's a second 
discovery story, discovery preservation story, there are three murals in the Cedar Rapids Art Museum. Only one is suitable for public display. Uh, but they were located by a, an Iowa City resident, also now deceased, by the name of Dick Federson. Dick owned what was then called Knoll Motors, which was the uh, Chevrolet dealership in Iowa City. And he was familiar with the murals from the Jefferson Hotel. In fact, he grew up in the neighborhood where Mildred and Louis Pelzer lived on Person Avenue, and he was acquainted with the two Pelzer sons, both of whom died in World War II. One died at the Battle of the Bulge in Europe, and one died in a training accident in California. And so he, he knew Mildred Pelzer and her husband, Lewis, who was a history professor at the University of Iowa. And he had an interest in the paintings, and he had heard that they had been in City Hall, which is no longer in existence. It was a, a building that was at the northwest corner of Lynn Street and Washington Street, uh, now the site of a, a U.S. Bank drive-in. And he went and talked to a gentleman by the name of Peter Rohn, who was Iowa City's first city manager. Um, asking if he knew about the murals, and it turned out they were in a furnace room at the city hall where they had been sort of damaged by heat. Um, uh, but uh, Peter Rohn told Dick Federson, the story goes, to take them out of the city hall furnace room before some idiot in, in Federson's recital of what happened takes them to the landfill. So Federson came into possession and spent his own money to have uh, two, at least two of them restored. And eventually he donated the three of them to the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art. One is in really excellent con condition. And fortunately, it's the one that depicts building of old capital, which is a beautiful piece, which is on display from time to time in Cedar Rapids. The others were in a lower level storage area of the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art during the major flood of 2008 and it got some flood damage, uh, not from uh, flood water itself but from sewer backup. And uh, restoration of those is uh, quite expensive. One has been partially restored and the Cedar Rapids Art Museum is in hopes of someday they'll have available funds in order to restore the other two. That brings to five the number of known Pelzer murals that are in existence. The other three are, nobody has seen anything of them in um, now going on 50 years. And so they're presumed lost and, and destroyed. Now, it's not impossible that someday they'll turn up in some attic or basement somewhere. One always hopes, but um, the, these two and the one in Cedar Rapids are the only three of the original eight that are suitable for public viewing. Are, are you familiar with other works by this artist? Well, not as, not as well, but Mildred Pelzer was an artist for quite a long time, long period of time, um, in her residence on Furson Avenue, and then she had a studio north of town near what is uh, now Stewart, now called Stewart Road, and actually what was her studio has been incorporated in a, a building that's gradually been enlarged, and, and I think is a private residence today, but she did lots of other types of work. She, she did uh, paintings of uh, still life flowers. She went through a period of modern, so-called modern art. And the Iowa City Public Library has another Pelzer mural that's totally different from these commissioned historic Iowa City scenes that is from her modern period. And 
In it, it's on display also on the second floor. I assume the reason for that is Mildred Pelzer was a, and a student of Graham Woods for a period of time um, when she first arrived in Iowa City and, and along with her husband who was a history professor. Um, one of the things I left out, by the way, when the Jefferson commissioned these these four by twelve murals in 1934 was the idea for the murals grew out of a dinner that was held by Walter Jessup and his wife, who was then the president of the University of Iowa. He was president of Iowa, University of Iowa for about 18 years, and it is he who Jessup Hall is named after. And there was a dinner party at, at his home, the same president's home which exists today at the very north end of Clinton on Church Street. The Jessups, um, Benjamin Shambaugh and his wife Bertha, who in her, her own right was a, an artist specializing in Amana history, including both photographs and some paintings, a local Iowa City attorney, uh, Mildred and her husband Lewis, who was a history professor, and they collaboratively decided that they would suggest to the Jefferson a theme for this commission, these eight murals, as transportation. So all eight of the murals, the five that survive and the three that are presumed lost and destroyed, have some relation to historic transportation uh, in and around Iowa City. Uh, a canoe on the Iowa River uh, depicting uh, Meskwaki Indians uh, and first settlers. The uh, old Capitol building involving limestone apparently floated down the river at times. The stagecoach, which is hanging in the senior center as a means of transportation in the early 1850s. The first railroad arrival um, one that is lost is the first depiction, the depiction of the first arrival of the Iron Horse. Um, uh, not, not, excuse me, not Iron Horse, but uh, automobile in uh, 1902. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so all of them have some uh, connection to transportation from the early 1800s uh, into the early 1900s. She painted these in the 1930s. 1934. She painted them in a room on the fifth floor of the Jefferson Hotel during a very hot summer. Uh, in, in that area, there was no air conditioning right. in this hotel. So the story is told that she painted frequently with a Turkish towel over her head, which she would drop in a bucket of ice water uh, to cool off the towel and then drape it over her to try to keep the oppressive uh, Midwest uh, Iowa heat away heat and humidity. Right. Not unlike what we've been uh, having this well, week. Except we have like air conditioning. Now. Yeah, yeah, we do. Do you have any idea what she used for source material for these? I do not. Her husband, of course, Lewis, was a history professor. Um, <coughs> and um, one of the other people who actually I ended when I was an undergraduate at Iowa from um, 1958 through 1962, I took a course in Iowa history from uh, Steamboat Bill Peterson, who was a friend, a then friend of Mildred and Lewis Pelzer, obviously from the history department. And he taught at Iowa for a long time. And, my surmise is that her husband being a history professor, they had connections. They had access to And uh, once the, the, the Jessup Shambaugh Pelzer dinner party came up with transportation as a theme, that Lewis, the history professor, probably in consultation with Benjamin and Bertha Shambaugh and maybe Bill Peterson, uh, further collaborated and came up with the specifics of the the uh, commission. They found news articles from the time. Right. And, and there is a, uh, and, and it's a, <coughs> I, I should take this opportunity to, to mention there's this little book, uh, Bob Hibbs, who's a, a local um, 
historian. He, he describes himself as an amateur historian, but he's spent enough time at this that he's, in my view, more than an uh, amateur historian. This book, Historic Scenes by Mildred Pelzer, by Bob Hibbs, has been reprinted and is available through the Johnson County Historic Society. If anybody in the library has copies, if anybody wants to stop there and uh, check them out, but if you go to the Johnson County Historic Society out in Coralville, they have this book, which I highly recommend. They have it for sale in a reprinted version. Uh, people how, how were these murals taken at the time? Do you know anything about that? What, what the people thought of them? I don't. I don't. There, there were newspaper, there was a newspaper story, which is still in the Iowa City Press Citizen, which is available, <coughs> but it talks about the dedication and the dedication brochure, which the library has largely reprinted. Um, and they have copies available. The book has as an appendix a copy of the dedication brochure. And it's also available in Microfish at the State Historic Society building, which is at the corner of Iowa Avenue and Gilbert Street. And those people were just very, very helpful. And uh, a couple of times I've been in there to try to do some research and find background. They've just been very helpful, very gracious in pointing me in the in the right direction and helping me get the microfilm going. But I've, I've been unable to find any newspaper story which gauged, <coughs> excuse me, which gauged reaction. Uh, probably the best I can report is the reaction of a 8, 10, 12 year old young boy who found them fascinating depictions of uh, historic scenes. Still does. I still find them fascinating scenes. And uh, for example, I, uh, this is not the one that hangs in the senior center, but the one that is at the library. From the dedication brochure, we know that there is a line of history to a woman who still resides in Iowa City. Uh, the dedication brochure recites that it includes a depiction of a man named Legrand Byington, who was an entrepreneur in the 1850s in Iowa City. And uh, he is, we've, with consultation with various historians, we've decided that he's the individual who's depicted with his hand in the air, uh, described as exhorting the railroad uh, worker is on because he had helped uh, as offer a prize if a train train tracks could be laid and a locomotive got into Iowa City by midnight on New Year's Eve and it was well below zero but he married into the Whetstone family which ran Whetstone Drug at the corner and it existed in Iowa City for years and years at the corner of Washington and Clinton Street. It's now a uh, Panchero's. Uh, but Bill Byington uh, was the pharmacist there uh, in the end of the life of Whetstone's drugstore. And his spouse still is alive, uh, now resides at uh, Oak Knoll and is a, obviously a descendant, albeit by marriage, of the Legrand Byington, who is depicted in Railroad Arrives, which is uh, currently hanging at the uh, Iowa City Public Library. I see in the caption there, so they had to push the train in to get it yeah. into town. But, but yeah, they, they wanted the, the $50,000 price, which even today would be quite a, a lot of money. It's money today, but um, 100 years ago. 50 years ago yeah. was a huge yeah. amount of money. Do we know if these murals are historically accurate? Well, since they've been in existence for no, the answer would be no, we probably don't. We know they're reasonably accurate, um, although the, there's uh, always been a debate about who was involved in the design, 
uh, rich and building of old capital. Uh, some debate about the role of Father Mazzucchelli, and he's depicted in the uh, mural which hangs in uh, Cedar Rapids Art Museum. But they essentially have gone unchallenged all these years. Do you know how these murals were financed? Well, they were financed by the, the Jefferson Hotel. Uh, I, I guess I do not know whether they were funded locally by the hotel. The Jefferson Hotel was a, I don't know if member is the right term or not, but it was a, a warden, W-A-R-D-E-N, hotel. Uh, I can't speak to what the connection between the Jefferson, where the ownership lie, whether it was uh, uh, financed by local people or not. But it was definitely not a WPA project. It, the, the murals do bear, I think without question, a some visual resemblance to a number of uh, WPA projects. And it was certainly done relatively contemporaneous to right, WPA projects. She was the same influence as other artists at the time. Uh, but sh these were in, in no way a WPA project. Uh, clearly find commissioned by the Jefferson Hotel um, rather than by the Works Progress Administration or any, any aspect of it. But it is not unusual that people reach the assumption, given the year 1934 and the visual resemblance to some WPA works. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us about the painting that's on display in the same well, center now? It, it, it's a depiction uh, again, I assume reasonably historically accurate, it, it shows the stagecoach operator in typical uh, stagecoach driver garb. The horse is getting ready to go, passengers getting ready. Uh, one of the interesting stories is that it, uh, the stagecoach at the time would stop on, on its route to Des Moines and other parts west. It's often said to brandy the men on board and to give the women on board a, a drink of water and the horses a, a, a drink of water. After, after these murals are returned, returned to the school district, will it, will it be possible to view them? Well, I'm hoping it will. One of the things that I have urged is that the school district's architect, and I think the, the principal has agreed with this and my contacts with the school district have, but I do not know what the final answer is, although they're, they're getting very close, is that they find a better place and, and design the remodeled, expanded Longfellow so that these uh, murals will go back into a place where they're more accessible, accessible without disrupting a, say, a student's uh, day in the middle of the classroom and that they'll have an opportunity to set aside times that the general public can come by and view them. We'd like to thank Patrick White for visiting us today at Iowa City Senior Center. And I don't know if the murals will still be on display when you see this, but watch for further news. Thank you for watching Senior Center Television. Last night and got that old feeling when you came inside I got that old feeling the moment that you danced by I got a thrill and when you caught my eye, my heart stood still. Once again, I seem to feel that old yearning, and I knew the spark of love.